If I showed you this guy's tracker, you'd think he was cheating. No question. So how does he do it? This is Curry, a former pro turned content creator who's hit rank one in the last four episodes in a row, and he's hit radiant on every role in the game. Not only that, he also went to other regions like EU and Asia and got radiant in just a couple of days in both servers. So how does this guy do it? How does he manage to stomp every game he plays? I've watched his VODs so that you don't have to. And so today, we'll discuss the five main ways Curry consistently hits rank one and makes it look easy while he's at it. And real quick before the video, if your rank is below Radiant and you want to carry your games to rank up like Curry, my team of Radiant coaches and I can help you inside our eight-week premium coaching program that offers a 500 RR rank up guarantee or your money back. Some of our coaches include Milan, who was the analyst on Ascend when they won champs in 2021, and Screwface, who was a sixth man on EG when they won champs in 2023. To find out more to see if you'd be a good fit, use the link in the description below to book a free call. Curry, because only 24 out of 50 spots remain in the program. Now, most players think that Curry's biggest strength is his game sense, which is probably true due to his long history as a pro player. But something that most people tend to overlook in low ranks, and even in Curry's case, is his stellar mechanics. And no, I'm not saying that he has flashy aim like Demon 1 or 10s. Instead, he has a very calm form of aim that uniquely carries his gameplay to the top of the rank ladder. As we can see from this clip, he doesn't rely on crazy flicks. Instead, his mechanics depend upon his cross replacement and precise movement. He is always isolating gunfights, and when he sees an enemy pop out, he micro adjusts his crosshair onto the target before taking a shot. And even if he misses his first shots, he never panic sprays. He keeps his cool and lands the next burst. Most people think that having great aim means hitting an insane flick on a jet that's updrafting. But in reality, you just need calm aim like Curry's. What Curry understands, but a lot of lower elo players don't, is that the enemy player will probably be surprised when you appear on their screen, so the enemies are often likely to panic spray. So instead of panic spraying back at your opponent, you should focus on stopping your movement and calmly flicking and micro adjusting to the target. When focusing on developing a calm aim, you might struggle at first and you might die before you're able to shoot. But if you resist this initial temptation to rush your shots to learn calm aim, you will slowly but surely become faster and more precise with your shots. If you want to quickly learn this skill, Curry himself actually shared his own aim routine. He recently mentioned that he was inspired by Demon 1's aim and started following an improved version of his aim routine on AimLab. We'll start with tracking exercises, which although is not the main aspect of aiming in Valorant, these drills will still help support other aiming skills like flicking and target switching. We'll then focus on flicking exercises, which is what will actually increase our headshot percentage and kill conversions. In these scenarios, Curry mentions you should quickly flick your crosshair towards the target and then slowly make finer adjustments before clicking. So this means to prioritize precision instead of speed. Some flicking exercises also involve horizontal moving targets, which is the most common scenario we will encounter in Valorant. Each exercise in the playlist is repeated two times, followed by a team deathmatch and then ranked matches. It's a rather lengthy warm-up that will last about 30 plus minutes, but it'll definitely be worth it even if you're an experienced player. Again, you don't need to hit crazy flicks every round to win games and climb the ranks. It's about developing a simple, straightforward style of aim that allows you to convert more kills. That's how you develop consistency, which is why he also keeps things simple even in other aspects of the game. The central aspect of Curry's gameplay is that if he can keep it simple, he keeps it really simple. When you think of 1000 RR Radiant Lobbies, you might think of the most insane strategy and complex gameplay, but honestly, it's the same game as lower ranks with better aim and faster decisions. Keeping things simple isn't by any means because Curry doesn't understand the game. He just doesn't want to rely on his teammates to understand the game at the same level as himself. You're playing B, that's where you're ult, playing. Bro. Yeah, and you're gonna counter ult when they ult because we have no other ults to counter their ult. That clueless no com jet in your ranked games? He's there in Radiant too, maybe with a couple extra thousand hours on aim laps. If you're calling a multi-stage complicated strategy in ranked, you're going to be adding extra points in the round where things can go wrong. In Curry's games, his attack rounds are simple. Go with the group, use more early util than most players, then glue himself to teammates and focus on trading them. He doesn't try and carry the team by getting 10 first bloods or 8 clutches. Instead, throughout even the mid round, he keeps things simple. When it comes to util usage, Curry rarely, if ever, makes the mistake of holding onto his util for too long. On most of his attack rounds, he'll chain a lot of utility together in more of a burst, in high impact areas of the round. 
For example, watch these rounds on Sunset. He uses his eye and dogs quickly at the start of the round so that he can take an opportunity to overwhelm a player and get a man advantage. The most important thing to remember is that utility that you don't use isn't going to help you win the round. A lousy piece of util is going to be more beneficial than no util at all. On the topic of keeping it simple, another thing that he is great at is always positioning himself to be able to trade his teammates. As we said, Curry always wants to be where the action is. On Sky and Sova, he puts himself as a second entry for the site, always behind the duelist. When scaling out, he only has one goal, trade the entry. Trades are the most effective way to secure the win. No concept is more important than trading and should always be your main priority. If you're setting up to execute and your entry goes out and dies with no trade, you'll find yourself in the most challenging position. The other team knows where you all are, you have no util, and you have no easy way to get through another choke point. The role of a second entry will often be more straightforward than the first entry. You let the entry go out and take the harder fights while you mop up people who are focused on killing the entry. As the second entry initiator, an important thing to note is how Curry uses his dogs and drones. If stuck behind a smoke, most ranked players will drone or dog through it to get onto the site, but this isn't optimal. When Curry's stuck behind a smoke, he'll often call for his team to get close to the smoke to pop out of it where he'll flash or dart through, then follow his entry up. If you're stuck standing still using a dog or drone, you're leaving the fate of the round up to your entry and second entry to play well. But by just popping out with the utility and a dash, you give enemies much less time to prepare and throw their utility, so you'll often catch someone off guard. So then you might ask, when is it appropriate to use a drone? Curry will only use his drone or sky dog to execute instead of a dart or flash when he needs the information safely. For example, using the drone first is better when you're expecting the defending team to be stacking a site. This can be on an anti-eco round where enemies are stacked holding a choke point with shotguns. Or if you're in a 5v4 and you're expecting that the enemy defender team might have rotated early to try and stack one site. Droning instead of darting forces your team to slow things down and gather info safely. Another instance of when to drone instead of darting is when you expect an operator on site. Check their money every pre-round so you're aware of it. Op money or chamber ult, drone. If you know they might have an op but they've been playing on the other site every round, trust your read and flash out instead of droning. Another important thing that I noticed is that he doesn't usually lurk. At most, he'll use his util to apply fake pressure and lurk after. Curry only does this when he trusts his team though, and you can take the same mentality for your games. Do you trust your team to hit sites and not get wiped? You can play a little further away and support from afar. If you don't, then go with them and secure the trades. To recap, Curry is nearly always where the entry is. On Duelist, he focuses on making space. On every other agent though, he plays second entry. And you want a drone when you expect an op or a stack, but otherwise pop flash or dart to run out of the smoke. Curry likes to follow a simple playbook to consistently win his games. That's why although he can play every agent at a high level, when he's pushing for the highest rank, he also keeps his agent pool simple. When he's not doing a challenge, Curry mainly plays Sky, Sova, and Rays, but he will also fill depending on the map. The strengths of his agents are that he is always going to be in action and has heavy hitting utility he can use to both set his team up and bail them out if they're in trouble. Let's talk about why specific agents wouldn't fit his style. Jet, Chamber, and Reyna are all low on util and require you to have teammates who can set you up to get the most out of their kits. You have no control over your teammates, so if you're pushing for Curry's enormous win rates, you need to be in the driving seat. Furthermore, these agents have nothing to fall back on if you're not playing your best. You're all in on your mechanics, which isn't ideal when playing at your peak RR against strong players. Sentinel and controller agents have much of the same problem. While you can have high impact anchoring and lurking, it's hard to guarantee value. If you're anchoring one site, but the enemies hit the other site, you've had no impact that whole round. If you're taking a lurk timing and your team all die, you've also had no impact. Remember what we said about filling too, don't get too attached to one agent. If you can only play Yoro or Neon on like every map, then you'll never really learn how the game works at the absolute highest level. You need to know the ins and outs of most agents in the game to get close to Curry's understanding of how to outplay them or play around them. Thanks for watching.